Hello guys, how you doing? My name's uh, Marco Hare, this is We Love Betting and, and the Football League uh, chapter now. It's been a busy midweek of Football League action, back again on Saturday, games coming thick and fast, um, great time of the year. Uh, Blackburn take on Burton on Saturday, um, Blackburn of course in the headlines uh, through much of the summer after appointing Owen Coyle and at the start of this season too. Uh, you won't be surprised to hear I'm, I'm opposing them this weekend. Um, if you look at the teams to have taken the most shots in the championship so far after three games, Wigan are top off 51 shots, Burton second 50 shots. Uh, why is that of note for Saturday? Well, 20 of Wigan's shots uh, of those 51 shots came against Blackburn last weekend when they uh, demolished Rovers 3 0. Um, and that came after a 4 1 defeat for Rovers at home to Norwich on the opening day and of course their midweek defeat uh, to Cardiff too. Uh, Burton of course second on that list go to Blackburn this weekend so they'll be fancying their chances. Uh, Shane Duffy of course uh, hit the headlines uh, in midweek um, quite rightly too after scoring two own goals and getting sent off and also rejecting a new contract uh, on the eve of that game too. He'll be banned here uh, and he'll be also joined on the sidelines by Adam Henley, Elliot Bennett and Corey Evans. Uh, so defensive options really stretched for Blackburn at the moment and the mood and vibe within the club just looks awful at the moment. Ben Marshall also rejected a new contract uh, last week and uh, Anthony Stokes went straight down the tunnel after being substituted in midweek. Uh, doesn't look good. Um, Owen Coyle apparently one game away from the sack already probably quite rightly too, because his team have been outshot 23 to 45 so far this season. Of course, three losses from three. They've never started a, a league season with, with four defeats from four. They do have the Football League's worst defence at the moment, and they look really vulnerable um, to a Burton side with, well, as Nigel Clough said in midweek, they shouldn't fear, and, and there's nothing to be scared about in this championship. They beat Sheffield Wednesday fair and square, 3-1 in midweek. Um, record signing Jackson Irvins getting on the score sheet there. Uh, and for uh, everything I've seen and read, uh, they were the better team. They only had 40% of the ball, but they could and should have probably scored a few more goals than that even. Um, if you go back to the first weekend of the season, they lost 4-3 at Forest. Uh, also looked very bright going forward. A little bit unlucky to lose that match. And the same can be said against against their defeat to Bristol City. They're a very good team, very hard-working team too. Chris O'Grady and Stuart Bevan up front will will really hassle and Harry Blackburn. Um, and although 14 goals have been scored in Burton's games, seven scored, seven against, um, the sort of new attacking intent should get rewarded at Ewood Park if, if Rovers are as sloppy as they have been in the first three games. We can we can make money if um, we back uh, Burton with a plus 0.25 Asian handicap start, 13 to 16 with Marathon. Um, basically, if the draw, we'll get a half stakes win. If Burton win, we'll get a full stakes win. The only way in which we won't make money is if Burton lose at Ewood Park. Uh, moving on to League One, Berry against Oldham uh, is the one that stuck out to me. Uh, very little love for Berry at the start of the season or, or in the pre-season too. Uh, understandably, really, they, they let the top goal scorer Leon Clark go and Player of the Year Peter Clark from last season. But they've made a very solid start. Uh, a deserved 2-0 win against Charlton at home on the opening day. 0-0 at Coventry and a 1-2 defeat at Gillingham. That defeat at Gillingham was quite interesting really because they restricted uh, the Jills to just two attempts on target. Had four themselves and they also won the shot count in that game too. Um, and if we're talking about reducing teams to minimal opportunities, Berry have been superb at it so far. Just three shots on target they faced across their first three games despite firing in 13 themselves. So very dominant on the shots of Shot, stem, shot stats and trends, I should say. Uh, back at Gig Lane again this weekend. Um, and i like them to put on another solid show. If you exclude the top 10 from last season, Berry's home figures were 1-8, drawn 4 and lost 1. Uh, so they should be very capable of getting something here against Oldham. Uh, Steve Robinson and Ian Barraclough in charge at Boundary Park now. They only came in at the first week of July. and The club only had six senior professionals at the start of the pre-season training too. So they had to work very hard to fill out the squad. Uh, were convincingly beaten at Millwall on the opening day, 3-0. But goalless games at home to Walsall and Northampton have meant they've picked up two points so far. Of course, still yet to score a goal this season. Uh, only five League One clubs have, have fired in fewer attempts on goal. Just eight efforts on target so far. Uh, again, that's amongst the bottom of the barrel in League One. Um, if we look at last season, they struggled quite badly for the majority. Fired nine blanks uh, away from home. Uh, only Blackpool actually scored fewer goals than them overall as well, Oldham. 
and if you combine that with Berry, who've kept nine clean sheets uh, at home last season, I uh, wouldn't be too surprised to see Berry keep another clean sheet here. Uh, Marathon are offering five to three on Oldham, scoring under 0 0.5 goals, which means a, a home clean sheet essentially. Five to three, a decent price. And I also was back in the 12 to five on, on Berry to win to nil uh, with Paddy Power. Finally, League Two, a game I'm really, really interested in, Accrington against Exeter, because the pressure is really mounting on Paul Tisdale now. Uh, the Grecians have, have lost all three games so far. Uh, they haven't actually started with four defeats from four since 1969, uh, but supporters are really frustrated, really restless after Tuesday's uh, smash and grab defeat at home to Crawley. Uh, but unlike the Exeter supporters, I'm still holding out a lot of hope for Paul Tisdale and Exeter. I still believe they can turn it around. Um, they've been as good, if not better, in every game so far this season. Just really failed to make their chances uh, pay. Uh, being denied by the woodwork and injuries as well. Uh, at Blackpool on the opening day, uh, they hit the woodwork twice and Sam Slocum, the Blackpool goalkeeper, pulled off a, a wonder save uh, as, as Exeter lost. And then against Hartlepool, they led 1-0, hit the woodwork twice as well. And then uh, became to two, um, two goals in 90 seconds from Hartlepool to lose that match. Uh, and then they go down Tuesday, they, they dominated the match, uh, hit the bar in the first half, spurned a few golden opportunities again, and then a breakaway goal on the counter-attack for Crawley, six minutes from time, uh, saw them lose that match. Uh, injuries you know, meant that they had to field 15-year-old uh, Ethan Ampadu, I hope I've said his name correctly, alongside Matt Oakley, a player 23 years older than the 15-year-old centre-back. Uh, but they both played very, very well, according to reports. Um, and the injury list is improving. Ryan Harley and Oakley, of course, played in midweek. Troy Brown was fit enough for the bench and so should be available here. And Tisdale's hopeful that one or two from David Wheeler, Joel Grant and Troy Archibald Henville will be available here. Um, and, you know, if Exeter can't win at home, just four home wins in 12 months. They've been superb away from home ever since they arrived in League 2. 11 wins from 24 away from home last year. And if you go across since they've arrived back into, into League 2, They've had a 42% win rate across their 93 away games. Uh, Marvellous statistics. Three wins in five at, at Accrington um, across that time as well. Um, those games actually featured 22 goals in total, and, and that's another very strong angle I'm, I'm approaching here. Both teams to score. It's 9-11 to 11 with 1-8 bet. Uh, I'll also add the both teams to score an extra win here for 13-2 to two shot. Uh, I think both have very strong merits. Uh, report suggesting a, a bug's gone through the Accrington camp this week. Billy Key, the striker, won't be available again through injury. You think Josh Windass and Matt Crooks, of course, have long gone. So Stanley's attacking options are very limited this weekend, but I still fancy them to grab a goal. Uh, 11 of their nine, last 19 at home have seen over three and a half goals. Both teams have scored one on 19 occasions at home last year. Between them, two clubs have managed just 11 clean sheets and 46 of their respective home or away matches. And they scored in 38 of those as well. So I really like both teams to score uh, at 9 to 11. And I'm definitely not writing off Exeter yet. So get that 13 to 2 shot uh, in the bag too. Uh, so there you go. Burton plus 0.25. Asian handicap at 13 to 16. Oldham to score z under 0 0.5 goals at 5 to 3. And both teams to score 9 to 11 at, Ac Ac at Accrington against Exeter. Good luck.